In Throne and Liberty, there are certain farms you should be taking advantage of as you play and level up in this game to not only help progress your level, but also your gear and skills. Now, your skills and leveling them are massively important and a major part of your progression. In this farm today, guys, you can take advantage of this as soon as you hit a level 20, and it's amazing for loot, materials, gold, experience, and much, much more. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and I'm giving away 1000 plus Lucent. Now to win this, it's as simple as this. Drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, make sure you are subbed. I'll pick a winner from the comment section and announce them on Sunday's video, tomorrow's video. So good luck everybody. Okay, so once you hit a level 20 in Throne and Liberty, you open up the open world dungeon of Silius Ab. I believe that's pronounced. I'm probably wrong. I normally am. Now, this is the place you can easily take advantage of, and it will reward you tons of loot, materials, and so much more useful items. Okay, so this open world dungeon, I do believe, is the first you do unlock. It unlocks around a level 20, and if you are anything like me, you probably know it's there, or you just probably overlooked it and progressed on with the game's main story. That's exactly what I did. Now if you're yet to get to a level 20 and you're watching this video, you have this to look forward to. So this open world dungeon is a place you can just go to and farm. Now there are a couple of requirements which I will talk about in a second, but following this guide will see you earning utterly tons of loot, materials and so much more goodness. So what's great about this farm? Well, because it's an open world dungeon, what makes this easier, if you're at a level where these enemies seemingly hit a little hard, you can easily just run around this area and find tons of players, send a simple invite to your party if you are a solo player. Most of the time people join each other, like you're seeing on screen now. Uh, this is a bunch of players I just literally invited and they all joined up and we're running around together slaying those enemies. Now, if you've got a team already, if you're in a guild, even better come here guys it'll be even easier now all you have to do really is run around the first floor and farm these enemies here because they're on a constant cycle of respawning you don't have to go to the other floors if you don't want to although enemies are harder there as our loot will be better too but at the end of the day guys you can take advantage of just the first floor simple as that now the floors like i said do get a little harder and if you aim in a team i mean stick to the beginning of it if you are in a team you can always experience it you got nothing to lose there's nothing stopping you farming the first floor like i said as it's the easiest and there's plenty of loot here to obtain so what loot drops well vital materials like ores magic powders polished crystals parchments and many other materials used to make growth books and growth stones used to upgrade armors and weapons and these drop so often in here it's unreal you can also get tons of armor too which although you may think it's pretty pointless or useless actually they ain't because they all count towards that lithograph which is a feature where you basically collect that loot mark it off and you can get better rewards for such so yeah it's a win-win but you also guys get xp not only for leveling your player, which I will add, isn't massive amounts, you definitely get about 100 times more during the main game story or side quests, but you also guys get mastery weapon XP, and you get this where well, you get quite a lot of this, which obviously makes you and your weapons even stronger. But the only way to take advantage of this dungeon is by having those abyssal contract tokens. And this is that requirement I spoke about earlier on in the video. So this is an in-game currency you collect while playing, which we will talk about in a quick second, exactly where this comes from. And now the game, when you are in these dungeons, will automatically use this currency when you are taking the enemies out and they're dropping you that loot. And this happens in all open world dungeons with all similar kind of currencies. But yes, this one, the Abyssal tokens are what are going to be used here. Now without these tokens, expect literally nothing from these enemies. But yes, like I said, you'll get tons of loot when you have these tokens, uh, but you also guys get that mastery weapon XP, which is massively important too. So exactly what are these? Well, like I said, it's an earnable in-game currency. Now the number you have is represented by that small grey skull icon thingy. You can see at the top right of your screen and at the top of your screen when you pull up your map. Now, uh, they're limited to how many can have these. That number is 20,000, which is a hefty, hefty number. But hey, 
Uh, they actually don't run out that fast as well when you're in dungeons. I mean, yes, you'll get a few here and there uh, vanish when you're taking out enemies, but it ain't massive amounts. Now, with these, you probably already have thousands and uh, don't really know how you accumulated them. Well, there are a few different ways to get these. Um, the first way is to get those Abyssal Contract Token Points, which when used, they reward you with a certain number or that certain amount they are named after. The ones I am using here give me 100 each, all adding 100 to my total tally of those Abyssal Contract Tokens. But there are others which reward you upwards of 500, which I have seen, so pretty cool. So how do you get these Abyssal Contract Token Points? Well, the most obvious way you've probably seen is by doing those Resistance Contracts, offered in certain times in the game. Now, you are limited to how many contracts you can indeed do, with a cap of 60 in total you can grab, uh, but once you have had 60 tokens and completed them, you can only pick up and do 10 per day. So yeah, keep that in mind. You can also get these guys by doing those co-op dungeons and completing them. Uh, so pretty cool guys. And I also have been getting them from those little red balls. I can't remember what these called off the top of my head as I make this video. But they are little red balls you're seeing here, there and everywhere. They normally open up a portal nearby or something along those lines. But these also are giving you those abyssal token points too. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. So yes, as long as you have those Abyssal Tokens, which I will add, you shouldn't be anywhere near these, uh, as long as you are still leveling up to a level 50, because you just come across so many of them, you really do. But yes, use this farm while it helps, which it definitely will early game. If you're just around level 20 here, this is a farm you definitely want to be taking advantage of. Like I said, you get armor drops, which are used for your lithograph to obviously fill those places in and claim better rewards you also get guys vital materials in regards to crafting you get armor and weapon drops in here too and you get many many other great great things that you just want to be collecting and stockpiling you really do but there we have it guys another throne and liberty video if you enjoyed it leaving a like really helps me out if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys i will see you on that next one